So question 25. A chemical cell is connected across a resistor. The terms electromotive force, EMF, and potential difference, PD, are terms associated with the circuit. State one similarity and one difference between EMF and PD. Okay, so I would say they are both um, work done per unit charge. I know the mark scheme also says you can say that they are both measured in volts, so that's fine. And I would say the difference is um, EMF is work done on the charges. And PD is work done by the charges. Okay, let's move on to part two. The resistor is cylindrical in shape. It has a cross-sectional area of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared and a length of 6 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. In this resistor, there are 9.6 times 10 to the 16 free electrons, and we've got to calculate the mean drift velocity V of the electrons when the current in the resistor is 3 milliamps. Okay, so we need to know that um, the current is going to equal NEAV, and if we just rearrange that, so I'm going to get V is equal to uh, I over NEA, and if we just look at this formula, we know that that's the current. That's fine, we've got that. Um, A is the cross-sectional area, which we've also got. Oh, don't know what that's meant to be. It's meant to be an area. And E is the elementary charge. And the last bit is the N, which is the number density. And this is where the question is going to, if you slipped up, this is probably where you slipped up. So the number density is the number of free electrons per unit volume. And in the question, it tells us in this resistor, there are 9.6 times 10 to the 16 free electrons. But the resistor isn't a meter cubed of volume. So what we have to do is work out. So we need to, sorry, the, so the number density will be the number of free electrons inside our volume and if we divide that by the volume that will get us our um, number density so what we can do is so n is going to equal 9.6 times 10 to the 16 divided by my volume which is cross-sectional area 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 6 times 10 to the minus 3. Now if we, we, we can put into our formula, so we're going to say that V is 3 times 10 to the minus 3. So that's our current divided by our number density, which is going to be, so let's do it up here, 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 times 6 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 9.6 times 10 to the 16 multiplied by our elementary charge which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and multiplied by our cross-sectional area which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared. And what we'll notice, they actually didn't need to tell us that, but I should imagine that would have confused a lot of people if they didn't, because that will cancel out. And if I put that into my calculator, I get an answer 
of 1.171 1 times 10 to the minus 3. So put it into two significant figures because all my things are given to two significant figures. Let's go with 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters per second. Okay, in part B then, a student is given a chemical cell, an ammeter, a voltmeter, a variable resistor, and a number of connecting wires. Design a laboratory experiment to determine the internal resistance R of the chemical cell using a graph. Start with a circuit diagram. In your description, pay particular attention to the circuit used, the measurements taken, and how the data is analysed using a graph. Well, they're saying start with a circuit diagram. I'm going to do that bit last because what I want to look at is the analysis. And from my analysis, I can look back to see what measurements I'm going to take. And then once I know the measurements I'm going to take, then I can design my circuit. So the analysis is the graph I will be plotting will have I along the bottom. It will have the terminal potential difference uh, along the side and oops and we're looking for this it will come a straight line graph where the gradient will equal minus little r so i can see that i need a circuit that i'm going to have different potential differences and different currents so i need to measure um, V and I and in order to do that I would have a circuit and I've got to be able to change V and I where V is the terminal potential so I need my cell I'm going to need an ammeter in that circuit and I'm going to need a, a resistance in the circuit and because I need to be able to change I, I'm going to need to be able to change it, so um, the current, so I will put a variable resistor through and I will have a look at V over there and so basically how the measurements are taken, what we need to do is change the variable resistor to change the current or to change the ammeter and voltmeter readings. Okay, that should be all four marks.